And on this beautiful day, we're going to be talking about patterns and expressions. But I would like you to write the goal down, which has not been provided here. So please write the goal down somewhere there. And the goal is, as on the board says, we're going to identify and describe patterns. So there we have it. Okay. Vocabulario. Some things that you need to know, of course. What does the word pattern mean? That's such a hard thing to describe, but you know it's repetition of some kind. Pa so let's take a gander here. Monday, to Monday, Wednesday, Sunday, Tuesday. Looking for a volunteer. What comes next? Thursday. Good. We're skipping every other day. And notice that we do get all the way through. We get all the way through that, uh, the cycle. Okay, January, April, July, October, January, April will be for that one. Red, blue, red, blue, red, yellow, red, blue. What will come next? Red will come next. Good, good. Now we're assuming, and it's probably wise uh, in this case, that this is the repetition. Red, blue, red, uh yellow all the way to there that's probably the pattern that's going on so we would expect red yellow next doesn't have to be there could be some other explanation for it all right circle square triangle circle square anybody want to take a guess triangle probably all right so patterns how about this one What's the pattern on uh, this one? For number five, what did you get there, please? All right, ten, because we're counting by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. These are my even numbers. Six, three, zero, negative three. Good. Negative six is what we get there. And how do we get there? Notice each time we are subtracting Three, go down by three each time. Number seven, two, eight, 32, 128 here. Is it 16,384? Is it 512? Are they both right? So uh, explain. Okay, so it seems that, that there is a pattern that's arising, and let's see, times four, and that's a times, times four, times four. Four. Okay, great. So it is coming along. Besides saying times four, you could have maybe put it in this pattern, right? It's two to the one power, two cubed, two to the fifth, two to the seventh. So how are the exponents changing? You're adding two to the exponents. Now, it turns out these are exactly the same in terms of we're still going to get 512 there, but it's just a different way of looking at it. So we're multiplied by four every time, or we're just adding two to the exponent. Okay, so we look at it a slightly different way and we end up getting the same answer or slightly different way can get you a different answer and neither of them would be necessarily wrong if you could back it up well. Good, so the key on this thing is we have changing and uh, vary. So please read the definition for us. All right, so mathematically, the variable can mean anything because it can represent one or more numbers. So watch this. Y could mean 6. Or Y could mean 3X plus 2. What? Yeah, that one letter can be substituted with all of that. And variables could equal other variables. So um, a variable is just a placeholder, pretty much. It's like a question mark. I don't know what it is yet. Hopefully, I'll find out. All right, and there's the key thing. It helps us to find the unknown values of things. So using our vocabulary, we're going to write N. Uh, if the expression is a numerical expression, A, uh, if the expression is an algebraic. Now, before we can do that, please talk to your neighbor real quick. How do you know the difference between a numerical expression and algebraic? Talk to your neighbor. Great. All right, so this one here has letters, and it could have numbers as well, okay? And, of course, 
the numerical expression has only numbers. 3 plus 2. That's numerical expression. Some might argue that a, a numerical expression falls under the category of algebraic, just like Boylston is inside Massachusetts. So you might argue that, but for now, we'll use the differentiation here. 5x. 5x has to be numeric. All class, please. 3 plus 5 halves. What is it? Class? There we go. Numeric. All right, 9 minus z times 5. Class? Algebraic. Chow. And we know that because of that, our friend the z. Class? This last one. A for algebraic. There we go. In number 9, besides variable, it might be wise to know what the other components are. Good, so let's make a change over here. This is indeed A. Is that why we didn't answer the second one? Okay, so notice here, this guy right here is called my variable, and we often will include the, the negative in that. So that's my variable. And this right here, or X, actually, clear that up. And then this one here is called my constant. A quick change. Just the most simple answer is just this is the variable. Um, when we're um, mathematically playing with it, we do need to consider the subtraction. But um, but just the x is my variable right there. It could be anything. Right now, over here, we clearly see that this is a variable and this one's a variable. What is the name of the four in the front? So the numbers that are multiplying or technically dividing any uh, variable is called the coefficient. It is true that the number four by itself is a constant, it doesn't change. However, since four is attached to the W, the value changes. So that the value of this entire expression, 4W, will change. It's not gonna be four, necessarily. It might be, but it doesn't have to be. All right, and clearly, uh, my variable here, my coefficient is eight. And lastly, over here, we have one variable, two variables, and this guy here is my constant. Yeah, so 8 is a coefficient in, that, in the previous problem. So this one here, my coefficient is 8 because the multiplication means I'm attached. So in problem number one, we're going to identify a pattern. We're looking at the figures uh, from left to right. What's the pattern? So it's important that we start here, go here, etc., as opposed to going from right to left. So next, we're going to draw the figures. All right, so if we look at this pattern here, our job is to look at the pattern, uh, and we're trying to count just the white squares. So just the white squares. Clearly, the first one has only four white squares. The second one, um, there are four more, because notice this one. This says how many more white squares, okay? So the original diagram is just the red here. That's the original diagram. So the question is how many more? So one, two, three, and four more. So the, the answer there is not eight, which is tempting to say, because it's about how it increases and not the total value at that stage. So let's change that. That's actually a, there are four more. Good. You're, so in this case, it looks like we are adding four to each time, or each time, or another way to say it, uh, so I'll write it both ways. Add four white squares each time. That's one way to say it. Now, what this does is just tell me about the white. Just tells me about the white. However, if you wanted to describe what it's going to look like, you might describe it differently. Does that so you can add it, add four total, or you can say where you're adding them, add one to each arm. So to find the pattern here, looks like we're going to go out to at least four.
All right, so let's continue uh, checking. Now, the, one of the hardest leaps people do is maybe visually you can get this pattern here without too much difficulty, but how do you go and describe that mathematically? How do we say, whoa, well, here's the, uh, my first figure, and here is the total number of p p tiles that I have. So I was reading p p p there. Next All right, so there's one. So notice one thing that never changes in this column. One. Where does that one come from? In the, two. In the diagram. Okay, good. So there, and there's also another thing that doesn't change. Good. So we have a two that remains constant there on some level. And there is, uh, you're right, some other one doesn't change much at all. Okay. So let's see. Where do these numbers come from? What does the first one deal with? Yeah. Make sure we're looking at this diagram here. And this is a, more of a red square, but on yours it's black. So... This is the one that's there. So the question is, how do I keep, how do I describe this three, and then how do I describe this five, and then how do I describe this seven being attached to that, uh, on your paper, black square? So here, this one here is the original one, just the black square. What does each thing describe here? What's the two describe? Good. This talks about the change. The change. Or added squares. Added squares. If you think about... All right, so continuing on, notice how the one changes. I do want you to pay attention that this has... The one is this guy here, and this two here... Because it's the second shape, I'm going to take the number, this is my second shape, I double it and add one. And that'll tell me how many um, white squares there are, or, or sh lightly shaded. And then this original one is my original black one, or red in this case. So now when we uh, put all that together, we end up getting... Um, six there. Now this one here is my third iteration. So I get six plus one is seven, and then I get eight here. And continuing. So how do I now abstract it? So n is any number. What if, what if I wanted to know the 100th? Because I don't want to draw this out to 100 and then figure it out. Because that takes way too much time. So what do we do here? Well, what we can do is substitute in. I'm going to keep, here's my original black square. Here's how things change. This is the number term. And then that's part of the change as well, the plus one. Now if I were to clean that up a little bit, notice that the black one in the front and the red one in the end, those guys can be added together. So I can write it as a simple equation, and it looks like this. 2n plus 2. Now, when we take number 15 there, it says there are 25, there are 25 um, plus 2. So this one here, there are 25 twos, a pairs, plus 2 or when we add those together, a total of 52 here in the 25th pattern. Again, why is that valid? So we don't have to write out, draw it out. We don't have to count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13 and then figure out which one the 25th is. Once we have the abstraction right here, all we have to do is plug it in. That's called evaluate. Problem number 16, did you have to draw 25 different shapes? No. So how do the table of values how did that help me? It helped me find an equation. And then I evaluated that. Evaluate simply means to substitute and simplify. So I got the abstraction, the equation. Then I evaluated it by just putting in 25. 